Planet Earth is comprised of one quarter land and three quarters water, geographically. The average human body is composed of up to 90% of its weight in water from birth. The human fetus spends nine months approximately in utero and in water. All living creatures that have breath are born in and or from water. The earth contains roughly 368 trillion cubic meters of water. Humans throughout history have used less than 10% of the world's water resources at any time. The average modern day human being uses approximately 100 gallons of water a day. That is five times the weight of the average human being, over 800 pounds. The average healthy human being will drink up to three gallons of water a day. All of the planet's most ancient mythos, theos, and cosmologies record creation events that begin with water. All laws, since primordial antiquity, were written to regulate land and sea separately. Laws pertaining to land became the law of the land, or rather natural or common law, and laws pertaining to the sea became law of the sea, or rather maritime admiralty law, which is international law and the same everywhere in the world, no matter where you go. All laws since time immemorial originally from and are based upon ecclesiastical or canon law via the ancient laws and ecclesiastical right of kings. Natural or common law primarily preserves the inalienable rights and needs of human beings who live on land differing between nations. The law of the sea, or maritime admiralty law, primarily grants the right that is legal to conduct merchant, banking, corporate, international commerce. Seeing how living persons cannot live on or in water for extended periods of time, and the earth seas have been used primarily for travel since antiquity, Regulation of the sea for merchant, trafficking, shipping, and commerce through law became necessary for the merchants of nations to do business internationally. The law of the sea, maritime admiralty law, is universal and transcends all national boundaries and laws legally. What is legal is not necessarily lawful natural or common law, the law of the land preserving the rights and freedoms of living persons is lawful. Maritime Admiralty Law or UCC Universal Commercial Code is legal and that legal robbery and murder. In ancient Rome, a Roman maxim law stated that he who will be deceived let him be deceived, which means the responsibility of the deception is on the one that is deceived by it. Basically, if you get it up the hoop, or what we commonly refer to as being stiffed, shafted, that's your problem. Unbeknownst to everyone, maritime admiralty law, the international law of the high seas, came upon land like a flood and made every man, woman, and child since that time dead in the water. The word maritime comes from the proto-italic cognates mer, mar, mare, and mari, which all mean water. These cognates are found in words like commerce, and merchant and maritime. The water that flows by currents in rivers is directed by the river banks. Water that flows in the world of maritime admiralty law is money because money is water. Money is current sea. It's liquid as in liquid acids. 
money or monai, mono eye or simply one eye in maritime admiralty banking laws is the lifeblood, the cash flow of the system of merchandising and traffic. To traverse this fictional world, there must be ships. Ships traverse water or the sea, and when they come to land, they come into a port. When you plug your electronic device into a computer, you're plugging it into a USB port, a universal serial bus port. The world of the internet is analogized with water as well. We have the deep web, and when you do live social media broadcast on the internet, you are streaming the show. When a ship pulls into the port, it comes down a canal to where there is a dock, and there the ship is tied off. The ship's captain submits to the dockmaster a manifest of birth, a license and manifest of goods and services being delivered by the ship to the dock. The dock master signs the manifest claiming the cargo is property now of the ward which includes livestock. All ships are female. A woman is a ship. A man is a fabricator. A man delivers semen into a vessel. The woman bears the cargo of the semen and labors for nine months wherein her water breaks and the semen in the hold come down the birth canal through a port of entry and are delivered in a hospital delivery room. According to Black's Law Dictionary, a hospital is also a bank and also a church. The woman has shipped newly birthed Admiralty Maritime product, stock, livestock, cargo. A doctor will untie the ship from the cargo stock, the product, by cutting the umbilical cord to the ship or vessel and sign a birth certificate, a manifest of birth after the cargo has been stamped or daubed by a footprint and fingerprint with blood and ink. And after the informants, which are your parents, sign the manifest, which is plainly written on the certificate itself, your parents, the informants, are informing the doctor that the cargo, the stock, is now delivered and can be claimed by signature. The doctor signs the certificate, making you now lost at sea as unclaimed corporate property, cargo, stock, product, commodity. You are now legally dead in the water, and your name appears in all capital letters and on every other legal document. And as I said, Legal is not necessarily lawful. The word capital, capital, etc. comes from the Latin caput, which means skull, and the word El, which is named for the Phoenician, Hebrew, and Roman god Saturn, which can be found in the Bible. Capital is where we get Capitoline Hill, Golgotha, Capitol Hill, as in Washington, D.C. Caesar in antiquity ruled from the hill, just as modern-day presidents, monarchs, and popes rule from hills. A gangster may shoot someone in the head and say, I capped him, a euphemism for a bullet causing death to the head. The word captain comes from the word capital, which means money, or one eye, and equals water, the currency ration. 
all corporations are fictional. They exist on paper as a dead body vessel, just as your name in all caps on a birth certificate. The Constitution of the United States was formed in 1776, but the Constitution of the Incorporation of the United States was in 1871. The Corporation of the United States was formed in Delaware, Maryland in 1871 and became the United States, Inc. All citizens of U.S. Inc. have a license to work for U.S. Inc. They are employees. All corporations must have three things. A president, a vice president, and a secretary treasurer. Everything in the world of merchant corporate banking law revolves around ships, as ships are carried by the water, which is the current sea, and all corporations are ships. If you want to have a car, you must have an owner ship. If you want to be a citizen of a nation or country, you must get a citizen ship. If you go into business with someone, you enter a partner ship. If you want to learn a trade, you may enter an apprenticeship. Want to go to college and get your degree? Get a scholarship. Want to go buy a new car? You go down to the dealer ship. If you are traveling by car, you may enter a town ship before you enter the very town. When a man and woman get married, and the word invokes maritime admiralty law, they enter a business contract and obtain a marriage license to do business as a partnership. If you go to a church, which means a bank according to Black's Law, you are going to a place of worship. Everything is a vessel, a fictional ship created out of thin air on paper in the sea of corporate commercial banking laws of pirates of the high seas. A person, according to Black's Law Dictionary, is a monster. According to canon law, Goyim translated from the Hebrew to mean nations, cattle, chattel, animals, beasts, non-human according to rabbinical sources which are authoritative in ecclesiastical or canon law which includes Talmudic rulings. Goyim have no rights. Admiral or admiralty laws apply to the authority of the captain who is the admiral of the ship. The captain or rather the admiral who has absolute power and control of the ship can make up the rules as he goes along. The word admiral comes from the cognates admire and the Phoenician Hebrew Roman name of deity Saturn L. Wherever there is a crown you would better admire and have admiration for the king who is the captain, commander in chief or else. Under common law there is no such thing as a victimless crime, and a victim receives compensation and redress for damages. Aboard a ship, the captain can make any act a crime and he can impose sanctions accordingly. If you have a house and want to sell it, you put it up for sale. You are placing a sail on a ship which will set sail and dock to another port when sold. When you send a package somewhere abroad, you are shipping it, even though it's more than likely traveling by land. If you are losing your house, it's said that your house is underwater. If you get in trouble with the IRS, or if you go to prison, it's said you have landed in hot or deep water, and someone has to come and bail you out. A ship pulls into a port and gets tied off at a dock. When you go to a court, your case is placed in a docket. All courts in the land are judiciaries. They are judicial courts operating under mixed Roman, common, canon, and admiralty maritime law under a crown. They are ships docked on land. This according to the Judiciary Act of 1789 passed by Congress which made all district courts admiralty courts having maritime admiralty jurisdiction. 
the United States of America and the United States are two different entities. One is a corporation, the other employees of the corporation. The United States of America never ever did win its independence from the crown in the Revolutionary War. The Charter of Virginia of 1606 granted colonists a license to settle and colonize America by the king. The Treaty of 1783 after Cornwallis surrendered to Washington at Yorktown completely contradicts and negates the generally assumed and taught notion that America won its independence from Britain. The first article of the Treaty of 1783 relinquishes all claims to America except for the continued tribute to the king under the Charter of Virginia of 1606. The Charter was invoked by King James I who gave you the King James Bible and it states in section 9 of the Charter and I quote, yielding therefore to us our heirs and successors the fifth part of all the same gold and silver and the fifteenth part of all the same copper so to be gotten or had as is aforesaid without any other manner or profit or account to be given or yielded to us our heirs or successors the Revolutionary War was over in 1781, but the Treaty of 1783 was signed three years later, which means the war was not over, nor was it won. The Treaty of 1783 upheld the tribute to the King's venture by the colonists, which means America remains to this day a British colony that pays tribute to the Crown, as imposed by the Charter of 1606. America was conquered. Liberty is not freedom. A sailor on a ship gets liberty when he's allowed to have a short leave from the vessel when the ship pulls into port. A dog has liberty on a leash when you take him for a walk. A prisoner gets liberty when he's allowed out of the cell into the courtyard for a few hours while under the careful watch of snipers. Liberty is a license. It is a privilege allowed by a ruler, owner, king, etc. to a subject of the same. America never has been the land of the free at any time. It's the land of liberty on the leash of the crown. In the year 1106, the judgments or rules of Oleron were first implemented by Eleanor of Aquitaine. After her return from the Second Crusade, having accompanied her first husband, King Louis VII. These were codified maritime admiralty laws that were supposed to protect the Crusaders' estates and titles while they went and fought the Crusades. This was based on the Greek maritime law of Rhodes of 900 BC called Lex Rhodia, which in turn came from the mariner laws codified ecclesiastically by the Phoenicians who began their merchant mariner empire in 1586, lasting a thousand years. In the year 1666, a great fire broke out in London while the Black Plague was ravishing Europe. The fire was intentionally set in Pudding Lane, as some historians believe, to clear out the slums to make way for what would eventually be the City of London. Parliament behind closed doors in secret invoked the Sestua KV Act of 1540, enacted by the then King Henry VIII, reworked and instated by Charles I of the time. Sestua KV from the Old French into English means this killed that life. This made all men, women and children presumed and assumed dead and a trust set up. According to Black's Law Dictionary, Sestwa KV means the person whose life measures the duration of a trust, gift, estate, or insurance contract. The life of a trust is seven years under the law of limited liability. This act is most diabolically evil because it killed everyone and gave them seven years to claim back their lives. The fires of 1666 also created the only parcel of land on the planet that does not have a title deed. 
the Golden Mile, the City of London, which is a corporation having its own flag, its own constitution and laws, its own defense and police forces. The Golden Square Mile holds the Bank of England, the London Metal Exchange, Fleet Street, FTSE Stock Exchange, the Royal Mint, and the Old Bailey Courthouse. The United States channels billions yearly to the Bank of England to pay the Crown's tribute. In 1913, the Federal Reserve was set up, the brainchild of a secret meeting held on Jackal Island in 1910. As United States Inc.'s debt soared well above the estimated gold reserves the corporation of the U.S. held as a standard for the dollar, the Federal Reserve Act was passed on Christmas Eve while Congress was away, giving the power for a foreign corporate entity to print fiat and collect interest on monies created from thin air. A bank does not loan you money. That's illegal. A bank gives you credit which is legal, but not necessarily lawful. In 1917, the Balfour Declaration was introduced paving the way for the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. The Bolshevik Revolution broke out in Russia that was funded and began by Wall Street bankers such as Jacob Schiff and J.P. Morgan. That same year, Woodrow Wilson signed in the War Powers Act that basically stated that the U.S. was stopping all trade with the enemy except for those whom are granted a license, which excluded Americans. Licenses began to be issued in 1933. In 1933, the U.S. had reached Section 11 bankruptcy. President Roosevelt amended the War Powers Act of 1917 and declared all U.S. citizens as enemies of the state. There was a declared national emergency on March 9th, with an emergency act being passed placing all power, property, and resources of the U.S. into the hands of the President under martial law that has continued ever since. This is renewed yearly by executive order. The Federal Reserve began to print fiat money. The all-seeing eye was placed on the dollar bill. All men, women, and children born ever since arrive as collateral for U.S. Inc.'s debt, as slaves and enemies of the state. The balance of debt versus collateral is determined through illegal wars for profit where the debt versus collateral is balanced, or rather the herd of slaves is thinned out. What all this means, ladies and gentlemen, is you are all slaves and cannon fodder for the nations you are in and who are subservient to the rulers running them. You have been turned into collateral for national debts. Consider this when hearing about the imminent collapse of the economy soon to take place. When debts cannot be paid, you are said to be in deep water, and those in deep water usually drown. Shylock, according to Shakespeare, asks for a pound of flesh to pay the bill. The owners of U.S. Inc. demand the same according to Admiralty Maritime statutes you are all under. The sun never did set on the Roman Empire, and Rome is just as alive today as it was a couple thousand years ago. You are all owned property and subservient to a crown, whether you like it or not. You are all considered dead and unclaimed by the crown who laid claim and made you their bitch. You cannot nor are you allowed to speak for yourself as dead persons cannot speak and is why you need a lawyer to speak for you in a court. The dead have no rights. This is all based upon ancient ecclesiastical or canon law at its root and core. When you board a ship called a church, which is also considered a bank under maritime admiralty, and embark upon it, the licensed and registered pastor or priest must teach and keep you obedient to the monarch, the crown.
because he who wears the crown, which is the monarch, is the head of the ship called church. He is the king, the lord and captain of the ship called church, and the pastor to priest is an agent of the crown. Maritime Admiralty, or rather Universal Commercial Code, or UCC, is the matrix pulled over everyone's eyes that governs all because everything has been made into ships on the sea of corporate commerce. Without their one eye, which is money, which is water, all ships are dead at sea and cannot traverse their fictional matrix they created. It's now high time for a concerted universal mutiny. Opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of election.